Let us pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us to gather here to worship you one more time. We hope that the things that we do in this worship service this morning are pleasing and acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Oh, and he victory will help you some other to win. You ought to fight manfully on word dark passion subdue. Oh, and look ever to Jesus. I know that he will carry. Oh, and why don't you laugh? The Savior to ask him to come for strength and keep you. He is willing to I know that he will carry you through. Shine evil combat, young man, language this day. Oh, and God, name, hold, and ring, reverence, and don't, don't take it in vain, and we've got to be kind, hearted, and true, oh, and look, look ever to Jesus, I know that I give. Ask the Savior to help. Ask him to comfort, strength, and keep you. He is willing to aid. I know that he will carry. Oh, and why don't you ask the Savior to help? Ask him to comfort and strengthen and keep you. He is willing to aid you, and I know that he will carry you well to to him that will come. I heard God give it the ground. Oh, it's true. We will conquer, oh, though often cast down, 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 he who is our Savior, our strength will renew, if we just look ever to Jesus, he promised that he would carry all you got to do is just ask the Savior to help. Ask him to come for strength and death. I know, I know that he's willing. I know he's able and he will carry you through. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, you have blessed us once again to come out to worship thee, sing praises, spirits of hymns and songs, lifting up thy precious and holy name. And Father, we want to thank you. Father, we want to thank you for our health and strength this morning. And most of all, we want to thank you for thy son, Jesus Christ, who died on the tree of the rugged cross, giving us the right to eternal life. Father, come to you in behalf of the sick and shut in here at the Northside Congregation and elsewhere. Continue to be with them and watch over them and strengthen them in whatever their sickness or uh, uh, problem may be. We know that you can solve all problems, dear Father. You're the king of all kings. I come to you on behalf of Brother John as he come forward this morning to
preach thy word. We pray, dear Father, that the thing that he preached and the thing that he said will sink into our hearts. Grant us wisdom to understand the thing that he preaches well. Father, remember those that dealing with whatever sickness throughout this world. Be with them, dear Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us sing. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles here below. We are the man to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation, this life must reign. We're singing, oh Lord, we need, we need a friend like you.
church say amen and let it say amen again certainly it is a blessing and an honor and a privilege for us to be able to come together this morning to worship our Lord and Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth in fact it's a it's a blessing that uh, we were able to wake up this morning in our right minds that God for whatever reason chose both you and I, and to be among the land of the living just one more time. He has blessed us. He has showered us with his grace and his mercy and his love. And if you just want evidence for that fact, just consider that for at least this one moment, you are on this side of the timeline of life and you are being seen and not being viewed. To those who are visiting with us this morning uh, in our digital worship space. We want to extend to you a warm welcome and let you know that you are our honored guest. And it's our hope and our prayer this morning that you being with us will be encouraging and edifying to you and that you will want to come back and be with us because in some manner you have been benefited by being with us today. We extend to you an open invitation to all of our activities uh, of the Church of Christ at Northside, whether it's in our digital space or in our physical location. And wherever you find yourself able and available, just come on back and be with us as soon and as often as you can. 
I'm going to ask that you will be finding in your Bibles this morning, again, the fifth chapter of the gospel account is recorded by Matthew. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And meet me at verse number 13. If it sounds familiar, it's the same passage we used last week. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And meet me at verse 13 as we read through verse 16. Here Jesus says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There's a term that we commonly hear in our day and in our time uh, that most of you are familiar with. We talk about our shine. And we use phrases like, I'm not going to let anybody dull my shine. My shine is pretty bright. And there's a good thing to be said about shine. Because usually when we talk about shine, we're talking about us doing things uh, that are good or in a manner which is good. And Jesus talks about shining as a precept uh, for kingdom living. Remember we talked about last week being salty uh, in this sermon that Jesus uh, preaches here in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 that we commonly call the sermon on the mount. He talks about in this sermon uh, what kingdom living looks like. And last week we talked about being salty with it. How we are to be the flavor and certain other uh, characteristics of salt in the kingdom. And he goes on from talking about being salty to being shiny. So I just want to talk for a few moments this morning designed to shine. And the first thing I want to do is the same thing I did last week. In an effort to help us understand some things. When we read the scriptures, we ought to ask ourselves some questions. And the first question we ought to ask ourselves this morning is who? More specifically, who is he talking to? Well, if you notice in verse number 14, he says, ye are the light of the world. Well, we really need to understand this morning that when Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, he wasn't talking to just any old body. He, although did not call out particular names, he's talking to a particular group 
uh, folk, let me help you with that this morning. If you back up to verses 1 and 2, the Bible says this. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. Now, who was the them? I want you to notice that he saw the multitudes, but he did not start teaching until his disciples arrived. Why is that, you might ask? Well, because Jesus, being God, already knew that some of these folk that followed him did so simply out of curiosity. They weren't following him to understand his teachings and to try to live by his teachings. In fact, the Bible will help you understand that fact. If you back up a little bit further to Matthew chapter 4, verse number 23, which tells us that Jesus had become famous not for what he was about to do, but for the miracles that he had already done. Verse 23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease uh, among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Understand, the Bible doesn't say anything about these people uh, are the multitudes believing? No, no, no. They were too busy receiving. So we understand the who in our text. We, we find that Jesus was not talking to just any old body, although there were multitudes around. He's talking to his disciples. And he says to them in verse 14, Ye are the light of the world. It brings us to the second question we have to answer. The first question was who? And the answer to it was, if you're a disciple, he's talking to you. But what is the second question? And to answer that simply, the what is, you are a light. And to put this in the proper context, Jesus says to his disciples, you and you alone are the light of the world. Well, what is he really saying, preacher? He's saying this. In this cold, dark, and dismal world, if there was only one light, let that light radiate from you. Don't worry about the multitudes. You. Don't worry about the surrounding. You. I'm talking to you. Don't worry about what other folk and other churches are doing. Don't worry about the multi. You and you alone are the light of the world. Paul put it like this when he instructed the church at Philippi over in Philippians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. He says, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke. Watch this. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in this world. So the who is you, and the what is the light. But if you are a light when are you supposed to shine 
Well, Jesus gives us the answer to that, which is question number three. When all the time. Walk with me this morning. Look at the second part of verse number 14 where he says, A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now, that simply means to me that we're supposed to shine all the time. In essence, we're required to yield our selfishness and our ambitions and our fears and even our pride in order to be used by God to transmit his light through us to this dying world. Notice that he uses a metaphor here. He describes us as a city that cannot be hid. Now, now, I think this would be a good place to pause to talk to some folk about pride. See, in your shiningness, understand that you are not light in and of yourselves. You are simply what is called a reflector. See, I mentioned talking about uh, uh, us talking about our shine a few moments ago. See, a lot of times we, we talk about our shine and what we're doing in, uh, in order to get folk to focus on us and how good we are and the good things we do. Understand me this morning. If you are a child of God, your shiningness is not about you. Your shiningness is not designed, if you're a child of God, to get folk to look at you, to talk about how good you are. Your light is simply a reflection of God's light. Y'all already know how that works. You look at the moon when you go outside at night and the moon is shining but the moon is shining simply because it reflects the source of light from the sun the S-U-N the moon being the moon doesn't have any light but it's a light reflector some of y'all look puzzled let me help y'all out this morning there's no light generated by the moon in and of itself. It's dark. And it depends on the sun, S-U-N, in order to shine. Everything we see about the moon and its light, its shiningness, comes about as a result of the sun. And it's the same way with you and I as children of God, as disciples of Christ. We have no light in and of ourselves. Just as the moon reflects light from the S-U-N, we ought to be reflecting light from the S-O-N. So just in case some of y'all have got caught up in your shininess and start to admire how shiny you are and want other people to look at you and talk about how shiny you are, I think this would be a good place for a humility check to remind yourself that it ain't you that's doing the shining. It's God shining through you. We're going to talk about why about that in just a few moments. Jesus says, you, what, or who, a light, what, when, all the time. Where, though, is question number four. Jesus lets us know in verse 15, the where is everywhere you go. Look at what he says in verse number 15. He says, neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all 
that are in the house. Now, now y'all, y'all, y'all know how light works sometimes. So you see, there are times when you want to set the right mood. I, I remember when I was young, and, and uh, uh, don't act like y'all been saved all y'all's lives. I remember when I was young, and I, I wanted to set the mood for uh, a particular young lady. Uh, uh, and not only would I put on the nice music, the Luther Vandross and all of that, but what I would also do is I would light a candle or, or, or put a scarf over the lampshade in an attempt to set the right atmosphere. You, you know, a, a little bit of ambiance in the room. But can I tell you this morning that that same type of attitude has filtered into our style of witness. You don't believe me? Listen to this. How many of you have said or have heard somebody else say something like this? I'm waiting on the right day or the right time or the right qualification or the right situation to witness to a particular somebody. Now, I know that I'm guilty, and if you're honest, you'd have to say you're guilty as well. But can I also tell you that that style of witnessing is not biblical? Why? Because tomorrow is not promised to you, let alone that person that God has put into your heart to witness. We can't wait on the right mood, the right situation, the right qualification, the right ambiance to tell somebody about Jesus. Verse 15 is simply telling us that we, his disciples, need to be visible all the time and everywhere we go. But not only are we supposed to be visible at all times and everywhere we go, we are also required to transmit. Let's pause for a second and deal with that word transmit for a moment. Transmit simply means to send something or to pass something on or to cause something to spread from one place or person or thing to another. What are you saying, preacher? Simply this. The metaphors of a city on a hill and a lamp on a lampstand, Jesus is telling us that we are designed to transmit, that we are designed to shine. Why? Well, Paul helps us with that. Romans chapter 2 verse 19 where he says that we are a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. So we can't afford to put our light under a basket or we can't wait to, uh, 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 for a certain mood or situation to allow God to transmit his glory through you. The who is you. The what is a light. The when is all the time. The where is everywhere you go. Which brings us to number five, how. And simply how is to let it. Walk with me in verse 16. He says, let your light so shine before men. You see, Christ is the original and the true light. He said over in John chapter 8 and verse number 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall, watch this, have the light of life. So what he's saying in essence is this, let God shine. Let God radiate. He's the source of your light. And all you've got to do is allow him to transmit his glory through your life. I don't know about you. Shining is one thing. But to me, let it is altogether different. Why? 
Because let it require some action on my part. Let it requires that I do some denying of myself. Let it means not to hinder or to prevent something from happening. And what I'm simply saying is this. I'm saying that when it comes to shining, don't be a letdown. Just let go and let God shine through your life. The who is you. The what is a light. The when is all the time. The where is wherever you go. The how is to let it. And lastly, but number uh, uh, not least, number six is the why. Look at verse 16 again. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And all I want to tell somebody this morning is this. You are designed to shine. You are a city set on a hill that can't be hid. You are a lamp on a lampstand. And that you and you alone as disciples are the light of the world. But we got to remember the why is not about us. See, too many of us, again, shine so that we can be glorified. Too many of us shine. So that people will notice us. Jesus didn't say anything about us. Except for us to let our light shine. But when we let our light shine and men see our good works. He says that it will glorify your father. Which is in heaven. Everything that we're supposed to do, everything that we're supposed to be about is to bring glory not to ourselves. See, some of us are narcissistic disciples where everything's got to be about us and all the shining is about us. No, 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 no. If you're a disciple, the glory is supposed to come not to you. But all of it's supposed to go to God. And even though the rocks could cry out if God wanted them to, he designed you to shine. But your light shining to glorify God is up to you. I, I remember a, a song some time ago. Uh, back when I was a little kid in Sunday school. In fact, most of you probably had the same or similar experience that I did. There were three main songs that we were taught as little children. And I think that if we just focused on these three songs, it might help us to understand what we're supposed to be about just a little bit better. Y'all y'all know the first songs with something like this. He got the whole world in his hands. That song taught me who God is. He's got the whole world in his hand. The second song was something like this. Jesus loves me, this I know. That song taught me what God has done for me. And because of who God is and what God has done for me, the last song that I'm going to introduce to you uh, ought to inform us about what we can do for him. I'm sure some of you remember this song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Y'all know how the song went. Then the song started uh, naming places that I was going to let the light shine all in my home. 
and it didn't just stop at the home. Uh, it went on when I'm at school or when I'm on the bus or, or all of those different places. And, and, and the last little specific verse, something went something like, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. And you know one thing I discovered about that word everywhere? Everywhere means everywhere. Yeah, even at the family reunion. Even at the grocery store. Even on our workplaces. You are required, if you are a disciple... You are required to be a guiding light. And the, the, the first thing we need to understand, if we're going to be that light, that we're designed to be, to shine the way we're designed, that God is not only the source and the power of our light, but he's also the, to be the beneficiary of it. Because all the glory is to go to him. Your shininess is supposed to glorify the Father. Your shininess is supposed to show somebody else the way to God. Your shininess is supposed to show somebody how good God is. How good God has been to you and how good God can be to them as well. And if your light hasn't been shining for that purpose, now is the time to let it. Remember we talked about that how a while ago. Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If whatever you're doing is not bringing glory to the Father, it's time for some repentance in your life. It's time for some change in your life. But the good thing about all of that is God allows change. God allows do-overs. God will freeze frame your life right now. Turn you on the path that you need to go. And start you on that path. But all you have to do is come to him and say, God, I'm repent. I need a do-over. God is faithful and just to forgive, and God is willing to give you not only a second chance. We shortchange God a lot of times when we start talking about God is a God of second chance. God will give you as many chances as you need. As long as there is breath in your lungs, there is room for another chance. I used my second chance up this morning. I already know that. I'm glad he goes beyond second chances. And he'll give you whatever chance you need right now. If you're not a child of God, you need to understand something. This Jesus who was speaking here in this Sermon on the Mount came to die for your sins because he loved you so much. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God wants you saved, and he wants you saved right now. You've heard his word, how he came and how he died for you. Believe what you've heard. Repent of your sins. That just means you turn away from them. Confess that Jesus is the Christ and he is the Son of God. And be baptized for the remission of all of your sins. You can make this decision this morning. You can make it right now. Just by reaching out to us on the contact information or using the contact information that shows up on your screen. Whether it's the phone number or the email address. And whatever you need this morning, we'll facilitate it. If you need prayer, we'll pray with you. If you need restoration, we'll aid you on that journey. If you need baptism for the remission of your sins, we'll make that happen this morning. If you just reach out to us, we'll reach out to you. And we always want you to remember that God loves you. And we at the Church at Christ at Northside do as well. 
And at this time, we'll turn the services back over to those who are going to facilitate it the rest of the way. May God bless you and keep you. On my heart, sing and ride. Jesus spent the night in red. Here's a path for us all. All alone. Here we're only still away. In some portion of the day. We're refined in all these days to be alone. Chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that we forever remain focused on Christ and all of the gifts that he has brought, Father, to us. The gift of grace, the gift of save, saving grace, and the love that he has shown us how to manifest towards everyone in the world. But we pray, Father, as we take these symbols of his shed blood and his broken body, that we remember all of those things, Father, that have brought us to him. In Jesus' name, we pray thank you. Amen.
together for this wonderful service please lord bless those who cannot be here and bless those who are here to worship you please lord forgive us for our sins the ones that we know we've committed and the ones that we don't even know about please lord bless the world and bless us all and i hope these prayers may be answered in my lord and savior jesus name i pray amen this ends our worship service online broadcast for today we thank you for tuning in and again, we hope that you were blessed in some way by joining us. We invite you each and every Sunday at 1030 a.m. as well as our other weekday Bible study and prayer broadcast that are scheduled during this time. We continue to pray for your health and safety. We are located at 18460 Conant Avenue in the city of Detroit. Be blessed. <music>